Remy is a French oil painting tradesman. He lives a normal life with his wife Lucille and two children. One day, while playing with the kids, Remy sinks into the chair. He quickly gets up, but the strange occurrence remains on his mind for a long time. Starting that day, he experiences similar occurrences frequently. He sinks deep into the couch and even his own bed before quickly pulling himself back up. Because there is no plausible explanation, he assumes it is all in his head and ignores it. One afternoon, Remy is in the studio with the kids. He forgets to close the tap, which results in the entire studio being flooded. The simple mistake costs him his entire fortune and ruins his career. While trying to retrieve the remaining good paintings, he again sinks into the floor. This time, he is unable to pull himself up and ends up in a lake somewhere in another world. Apparently, this world has three sons. Soon, a group of tribesmen notice his presence and run towards him. A terrified Remy walks backward and is pulled back into the water. In the following moment, he is back in his world, being dragged out of the studio by a friend. Remy knows that what he saw wasn't just a dream. Later, at home, he tells Lucille about his experience, but she dismisses it in an instant. Instead, she has another thought occupying her head. Lucille has fallen in love with her boss, Dr. Geller, and wants to move in with him. She feels sorry for Remy, but has chosen her happiness over their marriage. Losing his wife right after losing his career is the worst thing that could have happened to Remy. Still, he tries to be understanding and talks to her about the relationship. To his surprise, Lucille has even brought Dr. Geller to meet him. Honey, this is the man who's cucking you. Remy simply allows them to do whatever they please and promises to move out in a few days. Following that, he goes to his family looking for reassurance. They listen to him but change their attention towards his cousin soon after. A defeated Remy goes to the kitchen to spend some time alone. When he faces another series of strange occurrences, the family cat freezes midair in a jump. Remy holds it and spins it around, but the cat seems to have turned into a stuffed toy. He even calls his family to the kitchen before realizing that the world around him has stopped. The floor becomes loose, sinking Remy in once again. He screams for help, but before it arrives, he is pulled into the alternate world. When he opens his eyes again, he is in the middle of a forest with the coffee mug still in his hands. He walks down a path and sees a group of tribesmen slaughtering an animal. As he tries asking them for help, he realizes that they plan to feed him to their leader. Remy makes a run for it while being followed by the tribe. In some time, he enters a civilization and hides inside a cave. All of a sudden, he is pulled back into his family house and the force makes the kitchen a mess. His family hears the noise and finds the entire kitchen in shambles when they come up to check. Remy tries explaining what happened, but they do not believe him for obvious reasons. The shock of everything makes Remy fall unconscious and he opens his eyes again at the doctors. The visit is not very fruitful because even the doctor doesn't believe him. The following day, Remy goes to his studio where his landlord, insurance agent, and clients have gathered to talk to him about different payments he owes. Suddenly, they stop talking and moving abruptly. Before Remy knows it, he is sinking down into the floor yet again. He tries to stop himself, but it doesn't work, and he ends up in the alternate world for the third time. He comes out of a basket on top of a tree as the tribesmen look at him in appreciation. His appearance seems to be something everyone was looking forward to. As the crowd erupts into cheers as soon as they see him, they expect him to fly down from the tree, but Remy falls to his face instead. The language barrier between him and the people causes confusion at first, but then he is forcefully made to eat a green berry, which magically makes them understand each other. The leader of the tribe finally reveals the secret behind Remy's appearance to their world. It turns out that they have been troubled by a flesh-eating giant named Zotan for a long time. He kills and eats anyone he pleases, making the people live in fear every day. The mages of the tribe found a solution written in ancient books that said only a man from another world can save them from the giant beast. Hence, for the past week, they have been performing rituals to invite the said hero to their world. The reason the strange things were happening to Remy is because he is the savior of the tribe. A shocked Remy claims to be nothing of such sort and refuses to help them, but they hold him upside down from the edge of a tower to change his mind. He is then taken to an isolated room where he is supposed to think of a plan to kill the beast. Hungry after an eventful day, Remy holds a watermelon and is suddenly teleported back to 
to his world. This time, he doesn't bother telling people about his experience, knowing that no one will believe him. Instead, he goes to a library to investigate the situation further. The internet shows no answer to his problems, so he instead resorts to drinking a lot of protein to gain muscles and fight Zoten. In the following scene, he is back in the alternate world with renewed confidence. This is Remy's only chance to prove his worth, and he doesn't want to lose it. The tribe gives him a special sword before asking him for advice on how to get rid of Zotan. Remy tells them to move to a new village, promising to protect them on the journey. The villagers are scared, bound by a superstition that says that anyone who crosses the border will be struck by lightning. Remy proves them wrong by crossing the border first and encourages them to do the same. This makes the tribe believe that he is definitely their savior. After walking for a few hours in search of a new place, they come across two of Zoten's men. The duo warns Remy to return to the village, but he fights them using his newly learned but surprisingly good fencing skills. He manages to kill one of the soldiers, while the other flees to his leader. When everything calms down, the people start clearing up the dead body. When asked where they are taking it, Remy finds out that they plan to cook and eat it. Disturbed by the strange tradition, he orders them to stop immediately, and since the tribe doesn't want to anger their savior, they decide to do as told. A while later, a group of people reveals that Zoten is planning an attack on the tribe, and a war is about to take place. When Remy is back in the real world, he starts reading books on war tactics and history. He does research about battle formations, governance, and many more things to prepare. After finding out that the most important factor is a motivated troop, Remy gives a speech to the tribe the next time he meets them. With a little encouragement, the people are ready to fight for themselves and their families. One day, Remy decides to stay with the tribe and spends the night surrounded by women. They are all ready to do anything to please him. But Remy remembers being cocked and cannot get aroused. Their advances make him realize that he is still deeply in love with Lucille and wouldn't want to be with anyone else. Sometime later, Remy returns to his home in the original world. After tending to his son, he returns to the tribe, only to find himself in the middle of a battlefield. The tribesmen are losing miserably, so he asks them to retreat to higher ground. They do as told, preventing any more loss of lives. Then, Remy decides to put his strategy into action and goes to a sleeping rival troop. He starts insulting and slapping them at random, urging them to chase him. Things work out exactly as he had imagined, and the rival troop is exposed on an empty battlefield. This is when Remy motions his army to attack and hides inside a tree trunk himself. All those history books taught him the greatest survival lesson of all, being a coward. One third of the enemies are killed with arrows, and the rest are weakened because of the surprise attack. In a few minutes, they retreat in fear, giving the tribe a taste of victory. They bow down to Remy, who is now their absolute hero. Following the war, the tribe is led to a new fertile land, which they declare as their new home. Remy becomes the emperor and uses the knowledge of his world to make the village a better place. Soon, they make one progress after another and establish themselves as a modern civilization. Remy is revered as a god and is given many concubines to sleep with. During his stay in this world, he even paints a Mona Lisa-styled portrait of his favorite mistress. Six months pass in a similar fashion and being the emperor changes Remy as a person. Earlier, he used to be intimidated by Lucille's boyfriend, Geller, but with the recent change in his behavior, Geller is now the one intimidated by Remy. When they get into a fight because of their differences, Remy is quick to shut him out. It gives him a sense of satisfaction that the man he once lost to is scared of him. As time passes, Remy's achievements turn him into an arrogant man. He treats his people like servants, letting the success get to his head. The people of the village quietly follow his orders for a few months, but start to revolt as time passes. When Remy gets a hint of this, he goes to his subjects to talk about the problem. They claim that they are overworked and paid less just for the sake of his amusement. The village doesn't need more fancy palaces. Instead, the emperor must make efforts to make people's lives better. Remy tries negotiating with the rebels, but it doesn't work. Having had enough, they capture him and kick him 
him out of the village altogether. Upon returning to the real world, Remy goes to a friend, asking for help to reopen his studio. He is now evidently more humble than he was when he was an emperor. His life gets back on track as he develops a romantic relationship with a client named Delphine. They start to date, but just when she leans in to kiss him for the first time, Remy is pulled back into the alternate world. The tribe has called for him again, asking him to kill Zoten to fulfill the prophecy. Although Remy doesn't want to get involved, he is led into a cave with the beast. A brief fight later, he is about to be killed but just then, he throws a sphere in a random direction and manages to kill Zoten. When the tribe sees the creature dying, it erupts into cheers, getting ready for the final part of the ritual. It turns out that they have to kill and eat Remy in order for the prophecy to be fulfilled. He runs into the woods to save his life, but an old mage destroys an artifact behind him. Without the structure, Remy won't be able to return to his world. He is soon found and is about to be killed when suddenly his concubine retrieves the burning artifact and throws it into the river. As a result, he is teleported back to his family at a hospital. Lucille and Delphine meet each other. Upon finding out that their divorce hasn't been finalized yet, Delphine decides to stay away from Remy. In the following scene, Lucille realizes that she is still in love with Remy, and Geller was a huge mistake. She tells him that she has kicked the guy out of her house and is willing to give their relationship a second chance. In response, Remy asks her to always be happy and walks away on her ass. <laughs> Hell yeah, Remy. Back in another world, the people build Remy's statue to honor him as their savior. A few months later, Lucille and Remy are on a beach with their children. Oh enjoying their life as a family. The final scene shows Remy watching the TV and finding out that his painting of the Mona Lisa has been found at an archaeological site. However, historians think that it was made by a 10-year-old da Vinci because the portrait is mediocre. 